Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is a video that I am really excited to do and one that I have um, been wanting to do for a couple months and that is an author guide to Laura Pavlov. I read her books for the first time last year before Book Bonanza. I knew she was going to be there and so I read something by her and really enjoyed them and then just continued devouring her backlist last year and I recently... I won't say I finished her whole backlist, but I recently finished a, a series, and so I decided that I was ready to go ahead and film this video. So, with that said, there are two series of hers that I have not read. Goodreads has even more than that, but they're not on her website, so I don't know if they are still published, um, if you can still get them or not. Um, but the two series I have not read are not the most popular ones, not the most recent ones she's written, and I feel like not at all what you think of when you think of Laura Pavlov, just because they're not what's new and what's coming out. So the first one is the Shine Design Duet. I honestly don't know anything about this. I would be interested in reading it though because I do really enjoy her books. And then the other one is the Love You More Rockstar series. This is a series of three books. Obviously they are rock stars and I really do want to read this series. Um, I really do want to read this series but they don't have audiobooks so right now it just wasn't feasible for me getting this video up and out for you guys. So those are the two that I have not read but we're going to talk about the four completed series that I have finished by her. Um, I'm gonna kind of go in like an interesting order because I think several of the series she was like writing at the same time, at least according to Goodreads, the dates kind of overlap. So I'm not really able to go in publication order because I want to keep series together, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go through each of the series and then give you synopsises of the books. And then at the end, I will tell you where I think you should start in her backlist. So the first series that we are going to talk about is the Montgomery Brothers series. This is a series of three books following, of course, brothers. So the first one is Legacy, the second one is Peacekeeper, and the third one is Rebel. Um, I will say I have favorites and not so favorites in every series. They all have been kind of hit or miss for me. Um, in this series I gave Legacy five stars um, Peacekeeper three stars and then Rebel five stars. Rebel was my favorite of the series. So let's talk about what they're about. Legacy follows Ford after his dad passed away five years ago and he has taken over their company at Montgomery Media and he is a really big um, business mogul now and his two brothers also play a role in the company but they mostly work at their family vineyard which is in a different town. Um, so they own this big office space in, I think it's San Francisco, and there's an office space on the bottom floor that has become available that they need to rent out, and they do kind of like a competition to get the space, and the person who gets the space is Harley DeLuca, and she is opening a bakery there, and as a part of the deal, they are going to invest in her company. So it's also a little bit of a workplace romance. He, I wouldn't say it's her boss, but like he definitely has a, a stake in this company. Um, and so he is very grumpy, very cold to her at first, but the way that he opens up to her is so good. So they definitely get off on the wrong foot, but they do eventually form a friendship. Harley is very sassy, she's very strong-willed, and she's not afraid to put him in his place, which is what he needs. And so soon, romantic feelings get involved after they become friends, and that makes their professional relationship a little bit complicated. Ford really only wants like a one night stand basically. He just wants to have fun and Harley is not that kind of girl. She's not a no strings attached girl and so that is kind of where their issue is. They, you know, can't be on the same page. Harley has a, a rough past, a rough past, and it comes back to haunt her and we see a little bit of that in the end of this. It is kind of like suspense thrown in at the end. I know some people said they don't like it. I loved it. Um, so anyway, there is definitely a suspense element in the end of this one. That is not in most of her books, almost none of her books, but this one definitely has a little bit of one, and we see that because of Harley's past. So really loved this one. It was a great start to the series. Book two is Peacekeeper. This is Lainey and Harrison's story. So this is a kind of second chance childhood friends to lover story. So Lainey comes back to Napa after being away for five years 
and Harrison was her childhood best friend and the only guy that she has ever loved but he broke her heart years ago and now that her mom has been diagnosed with cancer she knows she needs to go home. Well while she's at home she really needs a job because she ends up staying there longer than was planned and she's like I need to make money while I'm here and so she gets a job at the winery at Harrison is that his name at Harrison's family's winery um as an event planner so Lainey wants to work there but she's not sure that she can handle seeing Harrison every day but they quickly realize that their love for each other like has always been there they just haven't seen each other in five years and they work through their differences and it's their romance Sorry if I keep looking down. I have a really bad memory of, with names and details of stories. So I literally have a 13 page document in front of me with like synopsises and stuff of these books. So anyway, the third book is Rebel and this is a brother's best friend story. So Jack is the youngest brother. We've seen him throughout the story and I was really uh, throughout the series and I was really excited for his book. We see um, both Harrison and Jack especially a lot in book one. They come into the bakery all the time and eat the sweet treats and um, so I was really excited for Jack's book but he is kind of like the fun easygoing life of the party brother. Um, but we, and we've definitely seen his playboy ways, but he definitely has a more serious side as well. And I loved getting to see that. So Monroe is Jack's best friend's little sister and she is completely off limits. His brother, his best friend, her brother wants nothing to do with the two of them getting together, but she really hates Jack. So it doesn't matter because when he, she was in college, I believe she had a big crush on him and he slept with one of her, I can't remember if it was a teammate who she hated or if it was a rival from another team. Basically, he slept with somebody that she was not a fan of and it really hurt her. And so she has really held this grudge and is not nice to, not nice to him, doesn't like him, but she is working at his company now and he is actually her boss. And so they have very much this like hate to love office romance going. But then Monroe and her brother are supposed to go to dinner with their dad and stepmom and her stepmom is just absolutely terrible. And so her brother forces her and Jack to fake date for this one night for dinner to get her stepmom off of her back and just leave her alone. Well, while they're there, her stepmom, who was truly awful, takes a picture of them and posts it online and it goes viral because the Montgomery brothers are very well-known businessmen in this town and it goes viral. So they have to keep up this fake dating trade and neither one of them mind. Things turn physical, they get feelings, but they keep telling everybody they're just faking it because her brother is so against it and he keeps encouraging the fake dating, but also at the same time is like, but you're not touching her, right? But you're not into her, right? Um, so this was super good. I loved the Off Limits Brothers Best Friend vibes and would highly recommend it. You can also read any of these out of order. You do see, like I said, the characters throughout, but they all would make sense on their own. It's just if you want to get like the snippets of the of the brothers in order, read them in order, but really they can be read out of order. Um, I would say pick your favorite trope and read it that way. And then we have the G.D. Taylor series. This is the one series that I would say really probably should be read in order. Technically you can read them out of order. There is a lot of overlap in the characters and it really, I feel like it would make so much more sense if you just read these in order. She, Laura Pavlov does this thing where at the end of almost every book she sets up the next couple, like very obviously, and a lot of authors do that, but I feel like it's super obvious when she does it, and while that isn't necessarily an issue, like you could still read them out of order because of that, this series in particular has so much overlap and there's like running jokes throughout just it would make more sense if you read them in order. I honestly don't even know if I have them put in order right now. I don't think I do. <laughs> but we'll go through them in order. So this is the G.D. Taylor series. It is the G.D. Taylor series because their mom is very against cussing. It is four brothers and their sister and while they are all like they're not all playboys but like they're very much like 
strong businessmen, some of them are playboys, whatever, they are all such mama's boys and so they come up with all these funny names or abbreviations for cuss words and so their last name is Taylor but it's the GD Taylor series. So the first book, I'll just go through and tell you the order and what I rated them all real quick and then we'll talk synopsis. So the first book is Wanted, Wed or Alive. I gave this one four stars. Then we have The Bold and the Bullheaded, which I also gave four stars. Book three is Another Mother Faker, which I gave three stars. Book four is Don't Cry Over Spilled Milf, which I gave four stars. And then book five is Friends with Benefactors, which I gave five stars. Um, this series, I will say, is very much like a rom-com series. It is over the top at points. I found most of it very funny, um, but if you were not into that, probably skip this series. But if you are looking for a light, funny series, this is the series for you. They are super duper fun. They're all fairly short. They don't really look like they're that much shorter while I'm holding them. But when I read them on my Kindle, they were all like just over 200 pages. Physically, this one says it's 307, so I don't know. But they all seem shorter and they were on Kindle. Okay, so... This series follows brothers that have moved to the city, I believe New York, but they've moved to the city and they are doing this like construction business. They buy and flip um, buildings with like apartments and stuff, like not just houses, they like buy apartment buildings and flip them. So book one follows Jesse. Jesse is this cinnamon roll hero who like trips over his words anytime he's around Maya. He does get over that, but he's super duper cute at the beginning, and he has recently left his fiance at the altar. She was terrible, she was super controlling, and he didn't even, like, actually propose to her. She posted their, like, engagement on social media, and it blew up, and so he felt stuck. Like, he was like, how do I back out of this now? Um, and so he ends up leaving her on their wedding day, and that's when he moves to New York, where his three brothers live, and they renovate condos. So while they are renovating a building, they live in the same building, um, just to make things easier so that they are on site. And, okay, so then Maya. Maya recently caught her boyfriend cheating on her, and she moved to New York to get away to be closer to her best friend, Emma, and they both get jobs at the same law firm. But Maya lives in the same building as Jesse, the hero. And they run into each other downstairs when she's moving in. They're both super attracted to each other, but both of them kind of clearly have a rough relationship past, and so they decide that they are just going to be friends. They become really good friends, but they can't really deny this attraction, and so their relationship actually starts pretty soon in the book. They are adorable, super happy together, but I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop just because they got together so quickly. Um, and so kind of spoilers here but while Maya knows about Jesse's ex she was not aware that he was engaged or that he left her on their wedding day and so when this information comes out before he's had a chance to tell her she gets a little upset and I don't know that was kind of why I lowered my rating for this one I felt like the conflict wasn't really believable he had a ton of chances to tell her beforehand and I felt like she pretty much overreacted. Otherwise, I absolutely love this book and it would have been five stars. It just was that conflict for me. Um, but Emma, her best friend, and Estella, who is Maya's mom, really talk some sense into her and Jesse has an awesome grovel. So really love it. Love the start of the series and the family aspect. We see their parents come out. All five of these books, I think, end up taking place like around Thanksgiving, Christmas at one point. Um, it's like each book is the next year, I'm pretty sure. And so we see them come out for Thanksgiving, and it's just really fun. So really enjoyed that one. Okay, sorry if the camera moved a little bit. I had to change my battery. So book two is The Bold and the Bullheaded, and this follows Spence, who is the oldest of the brothers, and his relationship with Emma, the best friend from book two. Now, Emma has given all of the brothers nicknames because they see each other in the elevator a lot when she is there to visit Maya and she sees all the brothers and gives them all nicknames and her and Spence have this thing where they do not like each other but they have this crazy chemistry and so this book starts with them having this strong like hate but also like passion for each other. They have shared a kiss before in the elevator and things got a little heated um, and so they now act like they hate each other so that they don't have to confront their feelings. 
and Spence knows that Emma hates him like she's always hated him he's always known that and he doesn't know why um and she dislikes him but also doesn't know why so these two fight all the time but as the book goes you see them start to slowly get to know one, one another get to um know them on a deeper level and see who they really are and Spence develops feelings for Emma but she is really scared of falling in love being in a relationship and she has some like mama issues but Spence wants a real shot with her but he refuses to do anything and then make her hate him even more so um he's trying to get her walls to come down and she's super afraid so she just keeps like building him up higher and higher um but this is a great romance i really loved getting to see like a sweeter side of spence and highly enjoyed it okay book three is another mother faker um so kaden is super smitten with cosette and since he met her he can't help but want to know her more but she has a boyfriend and he's not going to step on any toes no matter what a jerk the guy is. But when Cosette mentions that he is now her ex, Caden is excited that maybe he will have a chance. Cosette's family is not accepting of the fact that she is now a single. Um, her mom is convinced that she belongs with Jeremy and that they have to get engaged. She doesn't even care that Jeremy has been cheating on her daughter. Um... She's totally okay with it. She just really wants them to get, to get back together. So Cosette decides that she needs to make it known that she has moved on and isn't going back. And so she's at her dad's opening, restaurant opening. Her dad owns a restaurant with her ex's dad. Either her ex or her ex's dad. I don't remember. They own a restaurant together and they're at the opening night for that and Caden walks in and so she's super always been super attracted to him and they kind of become friends and so he she walks over and kisses him fake kisses him and hopes that he will play along says that they've been dating for months and he's super into her so he goes along with it Jeremy is still pursuing Cosette and her family is still big time pushing him on her but she deserves better for that better than that and Caden knows that and so he is there for her and it's their romance and it's cute okay book four I don't know what Amazon got on my freaking book I didn't read these physically so it's not from me book four is don't cry over spilled milk this is Gus's story we have seen Gus throughout the entire series I mean we've seen the whole family but Gus is like the playboy like he is such a flirt and just he is the over the top ridiculous character half the jokes that revolve around him I didn't get or didn't care like but I loved his book so he is the guy that you think is never gonna be brought down until he is and this is his romance with a single mom and it is so good so um, Gus decides that he is so into his new neighbor Susanna and he needs to impress her. He felt something when he first saw her and he is determined to see what kind of magic is there. He doesn't care that she's a single mom. He actually likes that more and the only thing that he has a problem with is the name of her daughter. We've seen throughout the story he really has an issue with olives. It's, it's like this huge running joke. Anyway, um, and her daughter's name is Olive and so he comes up with all of these crazy nicknames for her trying to rename her and her response is always it's Olive, Olive, super cute. I loved this, the child in this book as well. So it was super sweet getting to see Gus finally like brought down to his knees, not only by Susanna but also by her daughter and um, Susanna was trying to find a new normal for herself and her daughter. She was not looking for anything. Um, she, I believe is a widower. I'm pretty sure her husband has passed away and so Gus keeps like trying to find ways to get into her life and it starts out by him offering to build her bookshelves and so she does she lets him she is an author and who writes under a pen name and so he doesn't realize that she's the one who has all the steamy books on her bookshelf at first who wrote them but he figures it out and he starts reading them and it's just super cute I loved their romance a lot Okay, book five, Friends with Benefactors, is my favorite book in the series. This is the sister story, and this is a friends to lovers romance. So Penelope and Beckham have been friends, like, forever. Like, since kindergarten, I think. Um, 
and there was one time that they kind of gave into their feelings for each other and acted on it and they both felt more than they were expecting to and so now they're both freaked out and she kind of ghosts him so several months later we see a lot of that in book four so now several months later he decides he can't take it anymore and he comes back to focus on saving their friendship and potentially hopefully more um, because he can't stop thinking about her and he misses his best friend so he big time grovels and she agrees to be friends again but they become friends with benefits because he is determined to show her that she hasn't had any encounters that actually matter and that she has been missing out um, and so he decides that even though he wants way more he's just going to give her a good time and it is their romance and it's so good. Next we're going to talk about the Willow Springs series. This is her first small town romance series. So this takes place in Willow Springs, Texas and it is centered around a group of five girls who call themselves the Magic Willows. I think their initials spell out magic and then obviously they're in Willow Springs. This first book takes place in high school but we see them like grow throughout because the second book I believe is in college. The third book I think she's graduating college and so like we see the progression. Adelaide, I think she goes by Addie, is a high school senior and she is the mayor, mayor's daughter and she is just like your typical good girl. Her life has been mapped out for her and she has been following what everyone wants her to do. She is going to the college her parents want her to do, majoring for a job that she doesn't even want. And she's dating her mom's best friend's son, just like her mom has always planned on. And she discovers that that guy, her boyfriend, is cheating on her. And so she dumps her. And that makes her kind of start to reevaluate everything in her life. Her mom and her mom's best friend are like, don't even care that this guy cheated on her and really want her back together with him. But she's like, heck no. So it is her romance with Jet. Jet Stone has lived in Willow Springs his entire life but has a very different life than Adelaide's. Um, he is the son of a single mom who has pretty much been shunned by the whole town. He is this like moody motorcycle riding bad boy um, and he actually fights illegally to help earn money to support his mom. Um, but he's a really good guy. He's working hard at school. He plays football so that he can get away from this town. He wants out of this town and wants to build a good life for him and his mom. They've known each other since they were kids, but they have never really traveled in the same circles. They, you know, have very different lifestyles. So senior year and this funny math nerd who is a side character that was unexpected um, brings them back into each other's lives. And when Adelaide's life starts to crumble, Jet is really there for her and they become friends. So Jet starts to make Adelaide think about her life and about what she really wants and about how she's always just gone along with what everybody else wants for her. And so she decides that she is going to fight for what she wants instead of what her parents want for her. Um, but they really develop this sweet friendship and then it turns into a romance and it's really sweet. Um, I guess I should tell you, sorry, I don't own all the books in the series physically so that's why I didn't go through them. But book one is Frayed, I gave it four stars. Book two is Tangled and I gave it three stars. Book three is Charmed and I gave it three stars. Book four is Sealed and I gave it four stars and then book five is Claimed and I gave it three stars. This would be my least favorite series from Laura Pavlov but there are a couple gems in here that I did really enjoy and I'm usually going to like a small town romance even if it's not an all time favorite. Um, and this series can definitely be read out of order. Like I said, you see the progression of them as they kind of grow up. But if you don't care about that and you just want to pick tropes, um, it can definitely be read out of order. So book two is Tangled. This is Gigi's story. Gigi grew up with Gray always being a big part of her life. He is her brother's best friend. And due to his like his rocky home life, he spent a lot of time at her house. And so they like grew up together and they fought and they bickered but now Gigi is off to college at the same college as Gray but her brother is not there and so her brother tells Gray that he needs to look out for his sister and really protect her and both her brother and Gray kind of take this like overboard and are like 
ridiculously overprotective. Um, but it turns into Grey really having feelings for her and also kind of protecting her from himself because he feels like he is not good enough for her because he is very much a playboy and doesn't want to hurt her. Also, her brother keeps telling him, like, she's off limits. But Gigi, I'm pretty sure, is a virgin. She's never had a relationship, and she wants to explore all the college has to offer. And she wants to explore it with Gray, but knows that he won't go there. But um, they do decide to act on their feelings, and he teaches her some things. Okay, and then book three is Charmed. This is Mora's story. I'm not sure if it's Mora or Mara. Um, but she is interning at her, like, lifelong enemies company. She is graduating, and it has been a big honor to be awarded this, like, internship, basically. I think the university is who nominates her or who picks her. So the Benson and the Carlisle families like have always hated each other. They have this big feud that has been going on since their grandfathers. And so she knows to stay away from this family. But they are the top advertising firm in Dallas, Texas. So Crew Carlisle is the CEO and the son of her dad's enemy. So the grandson of, anyway. Um, and so while finishing up her last year at college, she is chosen as the top graduate in her class to go be the intern at this company. She's super torn about it, but decides that she needs to take this because even if she doesn't end up working there, it'll get her foot in the door to work where she wants to. Um, and then she meets Crew, who is her boss, and he pretends not to know who she is, even though he definitely knows, and he's just kind of a jerk. So the way... the the opinion that he has just about her family as a whole because of the feud that they have really um, affects how he sees her. But the more that they get to know each other, the more he realizes that she actually is a really hard worker and that maybe he should think about why he has a problem with her and with her family because it is definitely misplaced. Um, so they do sneak around together for a little bit just to keep things from their families. But some secrets come out about, I don't know what I'm going to call them secrets, but some information comes out about why they have always disliked each other and they realize that they need to kind of get over that and it is a s silly reason. So anyway, book four is Sealed. This is Coco's story. So Coco's sister is like just the spoiled princess and she's about to get married, her sister. Um, and so she needs a date and she has been telling her family that she is dating this guy who she calls Big Sexy. And so she needs this boyfriend, fake boyfriend, that she can call Big Sexy that is going to keep her family off her back. And so she asked the tall new bartender with a motorcycle and a sing he's a single dad to be her fake date. So Roman is a really good father and she just wants a fake date. So she also, she strikes a deal with him. They complete a contract that he will be her boyfriend for the weekend of the wedding festivities and then she is going to return the favor for one of his family events and then they'll go their separate ways. Coco has been turned off of dating and because Ronan is a single dad and a business owner, he doesn't think he has any room in his life for a relationship and he has a lot of baggage because of his ex. And so neither one of them expects to start a relationship but they both are super into each other and have this awesome relationship and they're just super like I don't want to say it's just chemistry like it's very compatible like emotionally too and so they keep extending the contract to more and more things and then eventually they just rip up the contract and um decide to go for it and see what could come of this relationship but Coco's relationship with Ronan's son I keep calling him Ronan is it Roman my notes say Roman with an M Sorry guys, I don't remember. I listened to this one on audio, so I thought I heard Ronan the whole time. But um, anyway, with his son, Tino. <coughs> and so he calls her his Coco Mommy. It's just really cute. So I enjoyed this one a lot. Okay, and then the last book in the series is Claimed. This is Ivy's story. So Ivy and Ty have been friends since kindergarten and they started dating in high school. They were super in love with each other when Ty's kind of life imploded and his mom left town with him and his sister. 
he stopped all contact with Ivy when that happened because he was ashamed of what was going on with his family. I don't want to tell you everything that was going on because it'll just ruin the whole book, but something happens with his family and they need to get out of town. So five years later, Ivy now has her own event planning business in Willow Springs and she is planning Ty's sister's wedding. Ty is now the biggest country music star and is paying for his sister's wedding and so he comes to town for the wedding but keeps saying that he needs to have budget meetings with Ivy which is really just his way of getting to see her and spend time with her. But the first time that she sees him she dumps a chocolate milkshake on his head because she's super mad at him for leaving and not talking to her. He basically just ghosted her, just left. So she's super mad about it. Obviously still has feelings there because there's still this like She's still super upset about it. He finally gets her to just talk to him and listen to him and so he shares his reasoning as to why he left and she realizes that she didn't have the full story and they decide to kind of reconnect and become friends again and then it is their relationship, their second chance relationship and it was cute. Last series we're going to talk about is the Honey Mountain series. This is her most recent series. She does have the first book in a new series coming out in March, but that is not released yet. So this is currently her most recent series. It is complete. I own the fifth book and I cannot find it. It was shipped to this house like two days before we moved here. And I remember opening it and seeing it and I have no idea where the heck I put it. But I own it and I'm going to find it hopefully before Book Bonanza so I can get it signed. So anyway, this book has five, five books. Series has five books. Book one is always mine. I gave this one three stars. This is my least favorite in the series. If you started the series and didn't love this book and then stopped, go back and finish the rest of the series because it only gets better. So Ever Mine is book two. I gave this book four stars. Make You Mine is book three. I gave this book four stars. Simply Mine is book four. I gave this book five stars. And then book five is Only Mine, which I also gave five stars. So book one. Always mine. This is a friends to lovers romance. Honey Mountain is a small mountain town in California or between California and Nevada, I think. So this series follows five daughters. Their mom passed away and their dad is the fire chief in town and it follows each of the girls stories. So Vivian owns the local bakery, Honeybee's Bakery, which she nicknamed after her childhood the n nickname her childhood best friend always gave her. So her childhood best friend was Nico and he is a firefighter in town who looks after his niece who belongs to his sister. Nico is a firefighter in town so he works with her dad but they have been like lifelong friends and when the story starts Vivian just received an invitation a wedding invitation from her ex six months after they broke up after she caught him cheating on her. So she's super upset about the fact that he would send her an invitation. She's like, whatever, we're broken up. Like, she's not distraught over that anymore. But the fact that he would take the time to send her an invitation, she's like, yeah, no. Um, so one night she's talking to her friend Nico about how sexually frustrated she is and jokingly asks him to show her what she's missing. And he is super into her but is like, no, we can't cross this line because I love you as a friend and I absolutely cannot cross this line. And she keeps asking him, like, not even that night, like, over time, keeps asking him. And finally, they both give in and he tells her, like, this is not going to be a relationship. There are going to be no emotions involved. This is just for a good time. Well, obviously, things turn into more. Um, this one just felt really long and really drawn out. And I honestly don't remember what other problems I had with it, but um, I know it was not my favorite. Okay, book two is Evermine. This is a hockey romance. So Everly and Hawk were high school sweethearts, but life happened and she kind of pulled away and he left to go to play hockey in the NHL. He is now this like millionaire, super famous hockey player and he's kind of made all his dreams come true, but now he is not playing good. Something's missing and he's playing terribly. Everly is now a sports psychologist and so she is hired to fix him and so they're forced to work together um, but it is bringing some things from the past back to light. He says that he will only work with her if he can go to Honey Mountain to their hometown so they're kind of in this like bubble away from the I wouldn't say away from the public because like everybody there knows them but like there's no I don't know that paparazzi really follows him around either but like there's no 
social media really following him, reporting on him. Like, it's very much just this bubble, and they get to figure out who they still are and if they still want to be together. This was a really good second chance romance. Really loved it. Okay, then book three is Make You Mine. This is a single dad and nanny romance. So Ashlyn is the youngest Thomas sister, and she wants to be an author, but she doesn't really know. She's about to graduate college. She doesn't really know what she can do for a job to, like, earn a living. And so she overhears that Jace King needs a nanny. He is divorced, and he is a firefighter who he works with her dad. And so he needs somebody to watch his two little girls while he is at work at the firehouse. So Ashlyn decides this is the perfect job for her. She is going to live in his guest house, but on days that he is at work, move into his house and stay with the girls. And then when he comes home, she'll move out to the guest house and those will be the days that she writes. And that way she can move out of her parents' house as well. She's been kind of like hopping around between her sibling's house and her dad's house, but she's ready to have her own place. So it kind of gets her out as well. They are both incredibly attracted to her, but this romance feels pretty off limits. Jace is almost 10 years older than her and is pretty good friends with her dad, works with her dad. Um, Ashlyn is writing a romance novel and is big time basing the hero off of him. Uh, the tension between these two is so good. Um, she accidentally walks in on him at one point. They have super flirty text messages. Just so good. I wish the tension would have been drawn out a little bit more. They kind of jumped into a relationship a little too quickly for me. Um, but I loved their romance. The second half of the book, there is an outside obstacle that comes in. I did appreciate that the conflict was like an outside conflict instead of something happening within their relationship, but I, I don't want to tell you what happens, but I really liked the way that it was done. I did feel like that was a little drawn out as well, but I really liked the way that it was done, the way that it was handled. I wasn't frustrated about the conflict other than, like I said, it taking a little too long to resolve, but really great. Love the single dad nanny romance. I just realized I'm getting a lot more critical about the books as I go on, but this is definitely my favorite series from her, so don't let that, like, sway you. Okay, book four is Simply Mine. So Charlotte is another one of the sisters, obviously. She has had a crush on her best friend's older brother for as long as she can remember. They were really good friends until things got a little heated one night, and so now things are awkward and they've started to drift apart. They now live in different cities and ha haven't seen each other for years, but Ledger is coming home for his sister's wedding. He is, I think, the best man, and she is the maid of honor. He is a successful architect. He's made a good life for himself, but he is excited to be back in Honey Mountain and also to have a chance to catch up with his friend, Charlie. She goes by Charlie. Um, she is a kindergarten teacher and he sees her at school again one day. He's there talking to, I think, the principal about like a potential job, but um, he goes and sees her there. And so that's where like she knows he's back in town and starts their kind of reconnection. But they're really the only two people in the wedding, I think. Um, and so they keep saying that they need to, like, have a meeting about the best with the best man and the maid of honor to, like, figure out wedding things. And then the first time or two that they get together, they don't even talk about the wedding. So they're like, oh, we have to meet again. We have to meet again. Um, and so they really rekindle their friendship. And so he's going to leave town, so they actually decide to just have this fling, which is not her style at all, but her sisters really convince her to just go for it. And then obviously things turn into more. Super, super good. Okay, and then the last book is Only Mine. So this is Dylan's story. So Wolf is a former Navy SEAL and a current billionaire who is running his family's hockey team. Dylan is headed to her new job when she has a run-in at the gas station with this really, really rude guy. But it turns out that he is her new boss, and when they finally realize that, things get a little awkward. So Dylan finished her law degree and had an offer to go work for the Lions, and when she meets Wolf Wayborn, who is taking over as the CEO, they instantly dislike each other, but sparks are flying. He wants her to get fired because she is just absolutely wrong for the job, but they agree on a like trial period um, and within that period they actually have to travel together to go speak to some players and so he starts to realize that she is not that bad. Super good. Loved it. Okay, I feel like I've been talking forever. It's been almost an hour already of unedited footage. I don't know what it'll be once I cut it down. So where do I think you should start with Laura Pavlov? I think it depends on what you like to read. 
I think if you were a small town girl, absolutely the Honey Mountain series, I honestly would say don't read them in order. Pick your favorite trope and start there. Um, if you love a single dad, nanny romance, make you mine. So, so, so good. Um, if you want more of a sports romance within the small town, definitely ever mine. Um, otherwise, if you just want like super sweet small town romances, check out Simply Mine or Only Mine, um, the last two in the series. This one can definitely be read out of order. Um, don't I would say don't try to read them in order and get frustrated if you don't love them because this series only got better as it went on. So definitely pick your favorite trope and start there. You are not a small town romance girl. Um, I would say the Montgomery Brothers. Again, pick your favorite trope and read. That way I would definitely suggest Rebel. Um, it is my favorite in the series. And then if you are a rom-com reader, um, read the G.D. Taylor series. But like I said, you really do need to read these in order so it's a little bit of a commitment um, because this series also pretty much gets better as it goes on. I mean, the whole series is great, but um, yes. If you're looking for a good rom-com, check these out. Um, these two aren't really small town at all. They both take place in the city. So I think you have a lot to choose from in Laura Pavlov's backlist and I'm excited for her newest series. It is, I think, also a small town series. We see a glimpse of it at the end of the Honey Mountain series, so I am looking forward to that one that comes out this month. So let me know down in the comments if you've read Laura Pavlov, what is your favorite book by her? If you have not read her, what book are you going to start with? And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.